Gray. <laughs> okay, I'm um, gonna do. I think my voice is now coming through. So why is if we've nothing else coming through? Let's try this. Okay, so you're using that. Music is now on. Can chat confirm that music is on? Okay, your voice is starting to come through now. It's just the delay of the, the stream. Good. Uh, as, long as, as, long as, as long as the audio's working, I don't care if it's a delay or not. Cool. Okay. Also, also, too, I just want to say that uh, the profile picture you use is kind of inaccurate, but that's alright. Which profile picture? Um, I gave you the profile picture. You asked for it in the chat, and I gave you it. No, I did use the right one. Hold on. I thought I did. Um, unless it's default. Here's the Dr. Dog. Hold on a sec. Pretty sure I used the right one. Um, there we go. The new Martin. Martin new Martin. Martin. Yeah, from Dr. Dung to Barbarian. <laughs> okay, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to move OBS off of my way because it's just a pain. And I'm going to bring up the chat. Okay, everyone can hear the music. Everyone can do that. Hello. And welcome to Pokemon Let's Go Eevee Stream, as voted by all of you guys on my Twitter. So, a bit of technical difficulties, as always, audio nonsense for some reason. Couldn't hear any music from the game itself when I first started to start. And that would be a bit of pain. I mean, I'm sure you all love to hear mine and Martin's voice, but I'm sure having game music on as well would have made it, you know, just added to the experience. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to thank you all for joining for this and say hello to Martin, who is joining me and keeping me company as I roam the world of Pokemon. Hello, people. So, Martin, can you see the footage from the YouTube? Then that way you can uh, see what I'm actually playing. <laughs> like, yeah, I can see the footage. This might be a little delay, but yeah. Walking around with my Mew. See that? So, so, um, so wasn't that? A so, just uh, uh, letting people know progress and everything. I just beat Brock, just beat Pewter City, and I'm gonna head off to Mount Moon in a sec. Let's have a look at what Pokemon I actually have out though first. Okay, I think I need to go to the Pokemon Center. Yeah, I already beat Brock. I uh, figured I'd um, get that far because I needed to record footage of beating Brock and I didn't want to do it on stream. So I figured I'd stream after that and we could do Mount Moon together. Sounds good. Thing is, I barely know anything about this game because I'm not really a Pokemon guy, <laughs> so this is kind of like my first. <laughs> well. I know. Well, you can get all the experience from Pokemon, considering this is basically a remake of the first one, and I think that really helps because um, it's like it really, it really helps um, having played the original because it's such a nostalgia blast. Was it when that music, initial music, starts, and I'm like, oh my god, this is like me from 1998 or whatever year it was I first played Pokemon. It's like, holy crap, this is amazing. Which I think helps to mask some of the game's flaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're using nostalgia to cover up for the, the simplicity yeah, and this of game the game. Is simple. Did now, hey, Leo, you said there's Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest. You're gonna have to tell me where that is because I did not see a Bulbasaur. Let's go with the Pokemon I do have first, though. And if you guys want, you can decide what party I use. So, I have got. Cat, well, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's, let's check data. I have a cat pee, a metapod, weedle, kakuna, pidgey, ratter's hat, spiro, pikachu, nidoran. Oh, actually, I don't have nidoran female, but I have nidoran male, bell sprout. Don't have gear, dude. I got an Eevee, and I have a new. So. <laughs> Pretty good so far. Oh. Yeah, looking at my 
nice little look new here. And it's all upside down. So I'm actually playing this with the Pokeball. So it's actually really limited, uh, but because it's only got the two buttons and the um, and this joystick, which is also one of the buttons. You know the great thing about the Pokeball? What? It's spherical. Spherical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Apparently, I'm too quiet and you're too loud. Only so. So, um, let's bring you down. Let's bring me up. So I'll bring myself up a little more. I can't actually bring myself up a little more. This is the max I can go. Unless I do some fiddling here, maybe? Maybe. So I think this is probably going to be a bit more even. And then I'll just okay. shoot. Goofed up the footage there a bit. I'm just going to turn up the game volume a little bit. Oh, too loud. Won't be able to hear you, Martin, if I go that loud. <laughs> Alright, hopefully that's fine. Alright, let me know if that's fine or not. What's this kid gonna say? Yeah, it's a boulder badge. Bitch. Yes, I know, it's a blue building. How many Pokeballs do I actually own? Because it's not that hard to get Pokeballs in this game. Like. It's crazy how many they I mean, I started with 50, and I don't know if that's because I had the Pokeball Plus or not. But, like, in this game, in the old game, when you beat a trainer, they just give you money. In this one, they give you money and Pokeballs. So you, like, pretty much always got some on you. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Just going to close that. All right, let's actually get make our way onto Mount Moon. If anyone has any suggestions for which Pokemon they want me to use, they just need to let me know. Uh, let's go. Alright, let's change my party. I always like to make this game isn't particularly hard. So, to make it a little bit harder, let's just put the weakest Pokemon I got up front. Wait till the uh, Nuzlocke start happening in this game. I don't, the Nuzlocke can't happen in this game. From what I understand, there's got to be um, some gyms require you to have caught a certain amount of Pokemon before you can enter. Which is just baffling. It's an oddish. Ready for most some of the most intense Pokemon fighting of your life. It's just got too many choices to pick from with this Metapod. Yeah. So you don't have it. Have you played any of the Pokemon games, Martin? Um, personally, I have played a little bit of Red, but like that was a vague memory because I played it when I was like seven, and I wasn't a huge fan of the RPG aspect. So I was like, "All right, I'm gonna put this in my drawer and forget about it." Okay. But... <laughs> so is that why you've never Maybe. really got into? Is that why you never really got into um, uh, Pokemon because of the RPG part of it? Oh, you bitch. Yeah, I'm a. <laughs> who's not really patient so like <laughs> uh, uh, adrenaline in my games uh, sometimes and Pokemon didn't really satisfy that so it really appealed to me but I did like the anime back in the day that was, that was awesome <laughs> no I can't boy I'm afraid I don't actually I never name any of my um Pokemon in like any Pokemon games, unless for, except for one Nuzlocke I did where I named all the characters after JoJo characters. I've never done uh, any kind of uh, nicknames. I don't know why, to be honest. I just I like having the what the Pokemon's actually called instead. Although in this game you can just add nickname names whenever you want, so I could easily just go and name all of my Pokemon. No, if I catch any spare Pokemon, I'll name them after Cartboy. And just Cartboy. Or I'll name them after people within the chat. But mainly just I'll Cartboy. Be every other, every other Cartboy Pokemon would be Cartboy. Would be <laughs> yeah. I'm cutting out. So, someone says something about a Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest. Um... I have no idea what that is, because I actually don't know where to get Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle in this game. 
I assumed they'd be the same places that you got them in Pokemon Yellow, considering this game feels like a remake of that one. Well, rest in peace, you. So are there any other Pokemon? Kind of waiting for another Pokemon Rumble game. It's decent to come out. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you, you are there other Pokemon games that you've played, like um, are not the mainline games, like uh, I, Mystery Dungeon or Stadium or anything like that? Huge fan, like I said, of Pokemon Rumble. I love the original one on Wii. That was like my jam. Okay. I um, only played the. I haven't actually played the 3DS one. I think was the one I played. Oh, oh, that one, the free-to-play one? Uh, yeah, I think so. Coach trainer? Um, okay. Do I really need coaching in this game? I pretty much beat Brock in, like, three hits. Well, I'll humor him because he has a Bulbasaur. Oh, you get one, you get him as gifts, do you? Oh, okay. Wait, I should probably not use Metapod, I forgot to heal him. Let's use... What Pokemon should I use, Martin? Uh... I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe R Rotata? Go on, then. Let's use Rotata. Yeah. Go, Metapod. Yeah, that's go. enough. Try and... Yeah, it is a bit weird that you get the starters as um, wild Pokemon. Because it doesn't feel like they should be, really. <laughs> like, it really feels like this. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because someone had to catch the starter Pokemon, right? So. Why. Like, why can't. Why have they never been able to be found in the wild before? So I guess this makes sense. I guess they're just really rare. I was, I, I was lucky to find Pikachu in the uh, Viridian Forest. I just heard Pika Pika from the distance. Oh shit. Radada was not the right choice. For he is now dead. Choose Mew instead. I think, hey Nan, I think you guys gave uh, Twitter, it says, from our Twitter account, hey, our Smash Direct live react in pre-show live. What? Weird. Yeah. I'm not sure why that's come up on Twitter. I did. Did you post out the proper one on Twitter and just delete that one? I think it's just YouTube being really weird. Well, uh, I don't even have access to Twitter right now. So. Right, I will do it then. That's bad. Yeah, I think it's just Twitter being funny. Go, go. And Bulbasaur is down. So, I don't know if we talked about this extensively, but what did you think of the Detective Pikachu trailer? Oh, yeah. Um, I, uh, I quite like it. It was a bit weird seeing the realistic Pokemon at first. But then, mm -hmm. um, I got, it kind of grew on me. It kind of makes sense. I think if they were like really anime looking and everyone else was real life i don't think it would blend as well and right yes it's like um i think it looks uh, pretty good uh, i'm curious to see what pokemon get such a big focus i'm pretty positive that um mewtwo and mew are gonna play some kind of role in it and so i'm interested to see Probably. what's uh they're going to end up looking like, like, <laughs> realistically. <laughs> but um, I, I think the Mr. Mime yeah. looks fine, to be honest. I think Mr. Mime looks like one of the better ones from that. I'm trying to think which ones I didn't like that I saw live action. Like, Pikachu looks really good. Jigglypuff does look a bit weird, but it, I, I, I have no issue with her being furry. Um, 
I'm, I'm more curious if some of the more human type Pokemon will appear. Or not. Because, like, will we see, like, Gardevoir in this? <laughs> will it just be an actress and not CG? Because of how human look, styling she looks. Um, yeah, I hunted I hunted Pokemon down over when I was um, in Viridian Forest. Well, I kind of made my way through it and just kind of caught loads and loads of Weedle. Yeah, the Greninja, the Greninja are the ones that I think look really strange. Like, I know they look... Oh, whoops, that was terrible. I know they look more frog-like, but I'm not super convinced on how they look. <laughs> Like, I think they look a bit too bizarre. What about you? What are your thoughts, Martin? Martin! Fine. You there. He just vanished on me. Apparently so. Okay, well, Martin's having some internet issues, so I guess it's just me and you now, chat. Oh, who? What have I done? My mouse being funny. Alright, I'm the... Oh, and now this is going funny. Stupid double-tapping mouse. Anyway. Oh, that's a Weedle. No, oh, whatever. So this is the first Pokemon game where I've just, like... Okay. <laughs> So I spoke again where I've like actively just gone to try and catch as many Pokemon as I can because of how you can just sort of trade them all for um trade them all for candies and stuff to sort of break the game entirely. So I had like 20 Weedles at one point because <laughs> I was just chaining them. I was curious what chaining them would actually what, what chaining them would actually do. So far, nothing. I can't, I don't understand. Other than it just saying, like, chain, I don't quite get what's special about it. And yes, you may, Cartboy. You may ask me a question if you want. If you guys can hear beeping and stuff sometimes from the mic, it's uh, the Pokeball Plus making noise. If chains make experience gains greater, that's pretty good. So it was starting to feel like experience gains were super low. Like it went from being really good to just not being anything at all. Oh, I hear another peek. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Chaining gives you perfect IVs eventually. Okay. For anyone curious, the Pokemon that I have in my Pokeball that I've been taking on me for walks is Nidoran. Although I'm having real problems connecting the Pokemon Go like device to like the Pokeball Plus to Pokemon Go itself. Like <laughs> having real issues with that and I don't know what's sort of causing all this or not. I like I have no clue. Anyway, I do not see Bulbasaur anywhere. And I, all I keep hearing is Pikachu. <laughs> Where are you, Pikachu? No, oh, go away, Pidgey. I do like the lack of wild encounters this time around. Because it means I can just dodge Pokemon when I'm actually paying attention. I am back. Sorry right. for the... Martin is back. We're just uh, Bulbasaur hunting. But if I don't see any, then I'm going to uh, just head on to Mount Moon. All right. And I keep hearing the sound of Pikachu, but I have I, I don't see the Pikachu. By the way, I do find that a bit funny, how like, um, you get Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, and then you can just catch Pikachu, like, really early in the game. So yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of funny. Oh. Wow, Cartboy, it's like asking me to pick two children, how could you? But it would have to be you, and, uh... Ooh, who else would I pick? Maybe Nervion. Who would you pick, Martin? If you if you had to only save two fellow Source Gaming members, 
in a, from a, in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> well, first of all, probably Cartboy, because that, that guy has a lot of positivity. Mm -hmm. I think he'd be really good in a zombie apocalypse as well. He would. You just shove a cart through yeah. the, the zombies and then just throw them away or something. It's if like, he was actually a cart. It's like, it's like I've played Dead Rising. It's like you just all I've got to do is attach a couple of chainsaws to him, and then you just run him over. You run, use him to run all the zombies <laughs> over. It's great. Exactly. Really good weaponry. Hmm. Um, and Nerbion's like a super muscly penguin, so he just plows through everything. I think those are my right, choices. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I would have Cartboy to run over the zombies, and then the second one, uh, maybe, maybe Voyager for his cool helmet, his <laughs> avatar, to protect ourselves. Wouldn't it just protect him? I mean, it's just the one helmet. Well, I mean, we could share it among the group. <laughs> Taking it in turns, wearing the helmet. Yeah. So you get the helmet for two hours today, and then I'll get it for two hours. <laughs> Exactly to save people, from, save people from getting their brains eaten out by the zombies. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> Sounds like <Exactly>. a great price. <laughs> exactly. All right, I didn't find any Bulbasaurs. Let's just head to Mount Moon. Let's continue on our adventure. And if I get a gifted one later, then at least I get one, and I'll have to come back and hunt them. Like there's only, there's only 150. I say, when back in the day. Back in the day, 150 seemed like so much. Yeah, but now it's over 700. I yeah. Think. But because of that, I feel like I could potentially like have one of every Pokemon, like not just in the Pokedex, like have one of every Pokemon. We need to find some people to trade with though to get. Level <laughs> Matthew Ruindalo says if we're going on icons and Spazio is OP, and I'm just like. <laughs> That's true, I did. actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is true. He's like a spaceship. <laughs> I can't tell, would Push be strong or weak? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, he is a Luma. Yeah. But he has. Does he have the chomping ability like Wario? It's hard to tell. I mean, he could technically float. So it'd make him harder to catch. And he could also harness the energy of star bits. That's true. That's true. And if he gets fed enough, he can literally turn into a planet. So you have to think of all the oh. possibilities there. If he can turn into a planet, then that's a pretty big, like, net positive there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You could create your own world. <laughs> all the fresh water you want. Literally, you push becomes the world. <laughs> it's not push against the world, it's push as the world. <laughs> Cowboy, you're just gonna have to enjoy your time as Smash DLC, that's all. Source game and fighting <laughs> game will come soon enough. <laughs> oh man, there was a discussion going on in the Game Explain Discord about which Nintendo accessories could be a character in Smash Brothers. Happy Virtual and, Boy, right? No, I was going to say the Nintendo uh, GameCube component cables, because they could charge $200 <laughs> for the DLC. <laughs> so, like, if, if, if you had to have a Nintendo console or accessory as, a, as its own character, I feel like it has to be the Virtual Boy, because it's the only one with legs. You know, possibly, but after Piranha Plant, I think like the Game Boy Advance might work. <laughs> the, what, which one though? The Advance, the SP, or the Mini? Oh, I just said the Advance. <laughs> well, to <so> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or well, actually, the SP might work because it has those the it has a hinge and it has two sides to it, and it could walk <laughs> with both both it could sides. It could bite as well, like just snap it up. That's true, and they could shoot cartridges. I think any of them could do that. Unless they're oh, a yeah. CD-based one, like the Wii U. Could the Wii well, the U game set would... its controller off remotely? Oh shit, I'm poisoned. <laughs> that's, uh... That's... Alas. Well, maybe we... You were poisoned because we were talking about the Wii U, Nan. Good job. <laughs> I jinxed myself. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, uh... Perhaps... 
I don't know. Perhaps even in this game, Metapod, at a lower level of Metapod is not the best of choices. Probably not. Let's go. Let's go Bellsprout. Labo. Oh, yeah, I guess, Labo. I guess Labo. Yeah. It's kind of cheating, <laughs> Phil. But yeah, right, Labo works. Well, if you guys want our actual like predictions, we are in. We are making a discussion about that. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Leo. So you've been forced to buy. You've been forced to play. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in Nintendo. I'm I'm in Nintendo's room right now, duct taping him to his chair, making him play it. <laughs> play this abomination. This is why you don't leave your credit card details on the Switch eShop. <laughs> <laughs> made a point not to do it. Just to avoid situations like that. You know we should play that uh, bootleg Pokemon game they have on Super Famicom. Um, oh yeah, I've seen that one. The one that's kind of mm -hmm. like Pokemon Stadium. Or not at all like Pokemon Stadium. But it's an original yeah. game. Yeah, exactly. There's like eight, <laughs> eight Pokemon to pick from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be fun to do like any bootleg game. Just... Maybe like uh, Sonic 3D Blast 5. Oh god. <laughs> or that uh, top choices. <laughs> for us. Or that Sonic Or that uh, Sonic the Hedgehog bootleg for the SNES. <laughs> I'm gonna put Rat out of the front. Do I have anything to stop this poison? I haven't actually needed to check before. Antidote, okay. Fuck. So, one issue I got with this Pokeball Plus thing is because the button is also an analog stick, I sometimes just accidentally move too much when I'm trying to press it down. So what does this do? Pusing is famous, this can be used to heal all status conditions. Oh, nice. C Nan, that's a good sign because it means that's your perfect Smash Bros. controller. <laughs> See, Sakurai has to take notes from the Pokemon Let's Go team because he wants people to play Smash as simply as possible. And this is how you do it. One analog stick. That's it. I wish you could do, I'm hoping you can use this Pokeball in the next proper mainline Pokemon game. Part of me fears that you won't simply because of how limited this is like it's literally a stick and two buttons and shake does everything else but like, there are just there are just some options in this game that i can't access because i'm using the pokeball plus so mm -hmm. like in the pokedex you've got loads of options to look at heights and check out um you know their movements and their cries and all this and i can't do half i do some of them but only what the game is sort of assigned to the button I'll be honest, like, well, actually, I'll, I'm gonna ask, does this have, like, any gyroscope technology um, in it? Yeah, it does, because, I mean, when you catch the Pokeballs, the way you catch them is through the movement of, like, as oh. if you're actually throwing it. So okay, because I was, so I was thinking, why hasn't anyone modded this to play Wii Sports Bowling? Like, that, <laughs> that would be great and awesome. I'm not joking, either. Like, that'd no, be awesome. They could, I mean, if they do mod it to play Wii Sports Bowling, that would work really well. Yeah. It hasn't been out very long, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, modders, they get stuff done real quick. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw on the um, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee's already kind of up. Like, yeah, yeah. That, ga that game's getting modded to hell now, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, yeah not great. You hear about what happened with some stingy people and the leaks that happened? Stingy people? I call them stingy people because they were basically compiling the pirated copies of Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu mm -hmm. and making them into applications that broke that bricked your Switch. Oh, what the fuck? No, that's not yeah. what stingy means. <laughs> but Oh uh, no. Well, maybe. Maybe this okay. maybe I need to brush up my vocabulary, but I mean, that's just like dicks. <laughs> As people being yeah. really dicks. Exactly. I, I, and the funny part is, I read an article that literally said that the reason why people were doing that was to combat the pirates. But, like, that doesn't make any That's, sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. It just sounds like an excuse for people to properly troll things. Oh, shit. It's evolving. Oh, hey. I wonder what it will be. What will it be, Martin? 
Um, it will be pushed us in, in God form. Well, it's yellow, I don't. so close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Guess that works, huh? Alright, chat, what do you prefer? Beedrill or Butterfree? Let me know what your preferred third third generation pug Pokemon is. I think single Joy-Con play for both of those next Pokemon and Animal Crossing is definitely a likely thing. Like, it just feels like... I feel like they want to do single Joy-Con because then you can have... Um, then you can do co-op really easily. I've been actually, as a little side tangent, I've been thinking that the reason why they're updating Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is so they have connectivity with Mario Kart 8 Tour. I mean, Mario Kart Tour. Tour. Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. We, we need to see what Mario Kart Tour is going to be like. I think it's, I, I think it's going to be Kart automatically moves forward and you steer it using, the, like, turning your phone left and right sort of thing. I can like see a lot it. of them cart games that are out there. Just makes the most sense to me. Cause like it's not like um Nintendo it's not like all of Nintendo's other mobile games haven't been some kind of offshoot of the main games that they do. That's true. I've been I've been thinking that maybe how we'll tie it in with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is if they add more me costumes. And then you can obtain those as prizes in tour, and then you can transfer them through your smartphone to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Hmm. Maybe. Seems like... I don't know. The frame <laughs> Colin says the frame rate looks rough, but I wonder if that's just simply my stream. It doesn't look too rough for me actually playing. So... I'm gonna be honest, I'm trying to follow along, but like, I'm trying to do homework at the same time, and my homework, like, website uses Flash. Oh, wow. And that, yeah, that bogs down, like, everything, so. I'm trying to create that balance. Yeah, my, my, my issue at the moment is in my new place, uh, the, where the Wi Fi is, is like, kind of the opposite side of my house, so I can't do. Um, I can't do, like, wired connection anymore. I'm gonna have to get one of them. Mm -hmm power things where I can set the get the internet going through the electrical wires in my house. Have you thought about getting one of those like Wi-Fi extenders? Um that's that's definitely another possibility uh to do uh, to get that. I kind of want to figure out how if I can do it like with a cable first though. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Wired can is a preferred option. Is that it's an Ekans Shit, there are snakes. It's a snake. 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 All right. They're so low levels when you catch them. Like level eight at this point in the game. Hmm. Pretty weird. So close. Excellent. I'm really good at getting like excellence and greats and stuff in this game. And then terrible when doing it so in actual Pokemon Go. Ah. Uh, like, <laughs> not very good at doing it. Yeah. Okay. Still remember, it, this is kind of like a nostalgia trip maybe at this point, but I remember seeing everyone and their mother playing Pokemon Go uh, back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of dwindled down, but. What is her name? Niantic? Niantic? Niantic, yeah. Niantic has been doing a pretty good job of updating the game and keeping interest yeah, from what I've noticed. It definitely runs a lot better now as well than when it first came out. Like, I've nearly had it crash as much as it used to. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good sign when things don't crash. <laughs> Eevee grew to level 15. I think I'm always going to keep Eevee and Mew in my party. Yay! It's a slightly smaller Ekans. I don't quite understand the point of heights in this game. Like height and weight, like Pokemon can come in varied. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. Hey. It's 
what's your homework about mine? You really want me to talk about it? <laughs> I don't know what you. I don't actually know what you study. So, um, currently I'm taking three classes: uh, pre-calculus, um, and then I'm taking a history class, and then I'm taking a chemistry class. Oh, okay. What what history? Because that's my field um, of study. Um, I'm doing history from. It's mostly U.S. history, but it's going from the Civil War onward. Okay. So we're currently in the 1960s. Oh wow! So the baby boomer yeah. era. <laughs> Pretty much, but we're more so learning about uh, JFK and all that. Okay. I don't, so, I don't know a lot about American history. I did Europe, obviously European history, and yeah, okay. it seems like yeah, bigger Pokemon seem to get more experience. So that's something. So wait, you're saying bigger Pokemon have bigger experience in the 1960s? Yes. <laughs> so I know they weren't tangibly related at all, but um, I know I just saw something I noticed because um, they're talking about it in the chat. I'm gonna put this B drill away. Where yeah, it? right now the paper I'm working on is about uh, parabolas. So mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's use this. Pins. Or as I like to call them, para Ebola. <laughs> just gonna yeah. add Ekans to this party. And you know what? Just for fun. No. There you go. There you go, cart boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... I will send some. Like I said, I had like an army of Weedle earlier. And then I sent a whole bunch of them to the professor for candy. <laughs> like, you know, that's kind of wrong, but kind of right <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like, is it morals or is it candy? Candy. <laughs> hmm, candy, definitely. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll send Cardboy to the Candy Man. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, that was the biggest burn I have ever heard. Cardboy, my man, I hope you aren't crying in tears right now. Okay, but you here? I'm a snake. Yes, you are. You're now a snake. And I'm afraid yeah. there is very little you can do about it. Uh, let's get these Nidorans to the candy man. The question is though, is he a cobra or a garden snake? I sent my gift bulbasaur to the professor just just Wow. That's dark, Leo. <laughs> so <laughs> cruel. <laughs> Jeez. This is like I hope you take good care of it. Oh, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trading them for performance enhancing candy. This is totally... Oh, wait, no, that was a big rat attack. That was in the Ekans. I guess this can help confirm... Oh, whoops, that was terrible. And so was that. Gotcha. Hey. I'll be honest though, after that after that meeting this morning, I'm used to Hero's phone with the <laughs> cloud sound effect. Yeah. Forty one experience for thingy. Oh, looks like I'm gonna get another evolution. For those who don't know, that's an inside joke, so don't ask. <laughs> Alright. My metapod is now evolving. That is wonderful. So you basically fed the Bulbasaur to your Ivasaur then, Leo. Yeah, to make it stronger. Oh, je <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Butterfree. The cycle of life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little poisonous powder. Oh boy. Alright. Time to... 
And then they also got rat attack. Okay, and also... Let's put Butterfree away as well. Who should I take out? Pidgey... Pidgey, Pidgey. Let's do Pidgey. Pidgey... Pidgey or Fero? Who should I take out? I used to, I'll do Nidoran for now, but you guys in the chat decide. Pidgey or uh, Spearow? Sparrow sounds more badass, so I'd go with Sparrow, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm going to do Nidoran for now, but I'll swap when we're in. Swap later on. What's this guy going to say? This is another coach. Pidgey. Leo yeah. says Pidgey. Because it can Mega Evolve. That is true. You really like Mega Evolutions, don't you? <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> Meow. Meow, that's right. Yeah, did you hear uh, about Article 13 falling apart? Uh, hello, John from Game Explain. Um, Article Thirteen. Uh, what what is Article Thirteen? Yeah, Article Thirteen was a proposal to basically put a stranglehold on the internet. Remember that one? Was it, it was like in, top... in Europe or in the US? It was in Europe. Oh, oh, oh yes, it's the meme law. You mean? Yeah, the meme law. Apparently, it's starting to fall apart. Good. It's terrible. It's really bad. Yeah, according to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Italy has pulled out, and there is, like, a lot of tension in Parliament over it, so... Yeah, well, the, the UK would def was definitely going to pull out over it, but, uh, well, I mean, we're already pulling out of the EU anyway, but it's just not a good, like, well, not, it's just not a good law at all, because it just, it's really hard for companies to also restrict it without, yeah, exactly. like, destroying a lot of their own business. So, I mean, you, I mean, YouTube has even said that they'd probably restrict a lot of European users. Yeah, I saw them put do the post on Twitter about it. Yeah, that's just that's just insane. It's just like you try to police the internet, yeah, it's gonna bite you in the ass. Cause... Yeah, it's not gonna work. It's... <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's not just about banning memes, folks. It's about banning the entire internet, like literally. Just a lot of people like. So like even stuff on social media, like you wouldn't be able to upload like a GIF, it's just dumb. I mean, some people, after they voted in Parliament, said like, if I knew about this ahead of time, I wouldn't even have voted for it, and I'm just... It's like, read it then, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it was a really dumb law anyway. Yeah, exactly. Nah, me and the funny... And the funny part is, it's called Article 13, which 13 is technically a superstitious yeah, an number. number. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It really, I find it really, I mean, I understand why they did it, but they like, forced you, but they, you're basically forced to get a, um, weeping, a Bellsprout or a, um, Bulbasaur at the beginning of this game. Because you have to have a grass type to go fight Brock. A grass or a water type, but there's no possible water type you can have. So they had to force. They had to change where you find Bellsprout so that you can get him earlier in the game. Yeah, the, I mean, the thing about Article 13, and I just want to finish this up real okay, quick. So. Um, like, I'm going to quote someone who recently did a podcast. Uh, the YouTuber's name is Mr. Mario2011. Is he basically nailed it on the head for me. Mm -hmm. On the surface, it seems pretty good because it's protecting these companies' IP. Mm -hmm. But, like, once you start getting into the layers, it, like, falls apart immediately because of, like, so many open terminologies and so many ways to interpret things. That's going to lead to chaos, yeah. essentially. It's nothing really that's concrete. If it was concrete, I could see more people supporting it. But... A lot of things are just very vague and just not, just not like, con you know, very down to earth. Yeah. So, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, it was a dumb law, so I'm glad it it's was. not getting anywhere through. 
I'm just glad though that here in the United States, uh, some states are making their own net neutrality law. So, okay. there's hope in my states. My state supports it. <laughs> so, let's go over to the Pokemon Center. Heal myself up a little bit. Yeah. Sounds good. I need. I need a little. Need a bit of R and R. <laughs> <laughs> True. But what is that? I really like the music in this game, and I really like the way everything looks. Like I do think the graphics of this game are really nice. And I wonder if a Gen Eight will look more like this, or will look more like um, Sun and Moon did. Watch it look like Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> We've noticed that Westerners like this look, so we're going to create two versions. Real Pokemon and Pokemon for babies. <laughs> uh, the outrageous 500 yen, but I got Magic Carp. <laughs> yeah. This is the, Real the best long life investment you can have. <laughs> Realistic Magic Carp. You're it's just gone. a fish, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's just a big oh fish. God. Just like this huge trowel. Oh my god. <laughs> there are a lot of Pokemon that would be really weird and realistic. I wonder if they get, how they're going to do some of those water Pokemon. Like Whale Lord and Sharpedo. Realistic Sharpedo. Ge Gyarados and Realism would be like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, realistic Gyarados. See, that's one I feel like could be in the film because it's so iconic like i feel like jigglypuff's just in the film to reference the anime speaking oh of. yeah yeah just watch uh one of the evolutions i think infernape i think watch him just be like literal bigfoot in the movie and uh i feel like there isn't i feel like there's a pokemon that's more bigfootish but I can't think like what it what it is. Maybe Slack Off. I'm thinking of the like mm. big sloth Pokemon. Oh yeah, the yeah that could be a good Bigfoot mm. substitute. But okay. yeah. So guys, my someone someone um poop. Leo said he wanted me to put Pidgey in the team, so I will. But I'm also going to put Magic Carp in the team because of course I'm going to put Magic Carp in the team. I'm gonna be honest. Want to get rid of? I'm gonna be honest. How would have people reacted if instead of Prana Plant joined the game, it was Magic Carp? It'd be another Pokemon. So, <laughs> <laughs> regardless of how memeish that is, it'd be another fucking Pokemon. Yeah, basically Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon, a Pokemon with swords. <laughs> oh God. A bit, um, there already is Pokemon with swords. I just don't remember what its name is. I mean, when you think about it, like oh, there's a Pokemon Bishar. for everything. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. But there, yeah. No, there is a Pokemon that is also just a sword, which is I, I just slash. Oh yeah, I remember that. I seen that in the Pokemon Pokedex 3D yeah. app. <laughs> yes, I actually paid money for the pro version. Oh, I don't did know you? why. I, I, thought, yeah. I thought the Pokedex 3D app was really cool when it came out, but it wasn't something I was going to pay for. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. it's something that is cool, so I don't blame you all for wanting it. Yeah, I just like the 3D models. I was like, man, this is cool. <laughs> but... okay. me, and, me and Magic Carp were going to be going places. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not in your stomach. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they talk about cooking Magic Carp in the original games. Oh jeez! Like, like the original Pokemon Red. Oh, they just noticed it's a Meowth up there. It's cute. I'm going back out to have a look at that. There's like a sleeping Meowth up there. That's really cute. <laughs> oh. So you know what? I figured we might as well do this early. But no. what's your like? What's your like quick predictions for the Game Awards? Oh, okay. Um, you're gonna have to remind me who is in what is in each category i remember game of the year and i remember oh i was family. i wasn't oh i wasn't thinking like awards i was actually thinking announcements like oh, what do you think is going to be announced there um i don't know it's hard to say i don't have any hopes for a microsoft or sony to be honest to announce anything <laughs> not after the abysmal xbox 
2018 conference, XO18. Yeah, it was being that conference, guys, to sum it up, was basically Game Pass. Game Pass. Yeah, <laughs> game know, Pass. It was awful. And I watched all two hours of that. I was really disappointed in myself. Same here. I, well, for some reason, I did that and I tortured myself. Oh, that's why Meowth was asleep. Because it was Team Rocket's Meowth. <laughs> but I actually think there's going to be some stuff from Nintendo announced there. Um, one of the things I'm predicting is Super Mario Odyssey DLC. Uh, I, f I feel like the boat has sailed for that, even though it feels like it really shouldn't have. Just yeah, I mean, like, I, I get why, like, I mean, it's one year after Odyssey, and, like, it feels awkward. Uh, yeah. But... Mm -hmm. They haven't technically released all the costumes yet, so there could be something after that. They might have just cancelled some of the costumes. Although, to be honest, I feel like um, what I think we're going to see is a... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, a Super Mario Odyssey 2 in the same way they did Mario Galaxy 2. Well, I could see that. I can, yeah, I can like see that. Doing this but I'd find it hilarious if they did a teaser of that that early. I uh, see. I think that's more of an. I think. I feel like Zelda's going to be the big focus of next E3. Like they'll announce whatever new Zelda game they're currently working on. Like I, I feel like Nintendo have kind of realised that they need to be quicker on the software because that was the issue with the Wii U. And so they're going to re be reusing engine in the same way that they've been porting games over from the Wii U to fill out time. I think they're mm. going to be reusing engines to make sequels. So I think we're going to get a Mario Odyssey 2 and a Breath of the Wild 2. They just rely on the same engine, but do stuff different in the same way that Majora's Mask and Mario Galaxy 2 did. You know, I'll be honest, I would actually love to see like a Super Mario Ultimate, almost, with like tons of past levels. From iconic 3D Mario games. That'd be really cool. I'd be um, <laughs> I'd, I'd be okay with something like that, like a, a Super Mario Generations. Yeah. <laughs> play, play as Mario and Jumpman as they go oh, through <laughs> go through all of Mario's history <laughs> and save all uh, of Mario's friends. You can play I don't want it to be... 2D Mario. You, you, you can have a 2D version and a 3D version of every level. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Although I hope it's not Mario Forces. <laughs> War never changes. Wario 2019. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh I, man. Uh, Sonic Forces what? was such an average game. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be a bad game, at least be exciting like Sonic 06. Mm. Like, the game was so bad, yet so enjoyable. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use the word enjoyable, but I did, man. I, in fact, I've I, beaten both Forces and Sonic 06. I think the only Sonic game I haven't played is Boom, because I don't have any intention of playing Boom. Yeah, after they patched out the Knuckles uh, jumping glitch, yeah, I think... it wasn't worth playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Plus, dude, that patch was, like, unusually large, and it'd be, like, too much time to even play the game yeah. with that patch. <laughs> oh. So. Plus, dude, I think a lot of people have their Wii U stashed somewhere else. Mine's next to my PlayStation 4, but both are covered in dust. I need to do some dusting. <laughs> I, I was so annoyed. I, I, I discovered that I could use my... All this time, my PS4's, like, plug charger can also be used on the PS2. Which seems great, except I forgot uh, to bring a PS2 memory card with me. So, I can't actually play anything. Ooh. Which yeah, I... is lame. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of lame. It stinks. Mm. Nani? <laughs> Nani? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think a Mario Odyssey 2 will have Al Delfino as well, though. Yeah, do you think Prime 4 is going to be at the Game Awards? Ah, uh, I don't. I know a lot of people think... Maybe Prime Trilogy HD. I still feel like that's something that's coming first before we get Prime 4. 
Yeah, maybe they'll do something along the lines that they did with Bayonetta 3. Like, they'll show all the Prime games on, like, Switch. Mm. And then maybe do, like, a little teaser trailer for Prime 4. Yeah, that's definitely possible. Yeah, that, that's that's what they announced at the Game Wars last year, wasn't it? Bayonetta 3. It was, yeah. I forgot all about that. Yeah. <laughs> so many games coming out in 2019. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, 2019 looks to be a better year for the Switch. I mean, a lot of people were saying that at the beginning of this year, that 2018 would be much more third-party focused and Nintendo's presence would be very light. But it's all to build up for a really strong 2019. And that's, yeah, exactly. that's definitely looking like it's going to be the case because we've got some, um, like, probably a new Mario because there's always a new Mario, but we've got Animal Crossing will be coming out, Fire Emblem will be coming out, Yoshi's going to be coming out. I'm almost confident we'll get some form of Metroid Prime next year, whether it's Trilogy or 4. And then we've got uh, anything else they want to port. Luigi's Mansion 3 will be next year. We'll probably find out what Retro's game is. I'm pretty sure it is that rumoured Star Fox racing game, but we'll have to see. And yeah. The like, um, so there'll be Star Fox as well. We'll get Pokemon Gen 8 next year. I'm actually thinking we might get Super Mario Maker 2 as well. Yeah, I think we can definitely get some kind of Mario game. It's too early for Mario Golf, I think, but... Um, Mario Maker, we could definitely could see. I don't know. I don't know what the 2D Mario team has really made. I mean, they obviously just ported new Super Mario Brothers over, but they can't be all of that. So yeah, that can't just be it. I feel like there's got to be something else that um, they're working on. Yeah, you know, it was kind of upsetting to me because I had a dream that games playable on the Switch, mm -hmm. and I'm just like pissed because that'd be awesome <laughs> like like because i'm feeling a little bit nostalgic for the wii recently mm -hmm. and i want to play them in like high resolutions and it's just like we could man. see skyward sword hd i think that is something that's coming at one point i mean yeah i've been here i've been here it's been rumored a little bit i think has it been rumored i, f I feel like people have just sort of assumed it's a thing that's happening <laughs> just because we've had i could see wind waker hd and twilight princess hd both being released like Maybe not physically, unless they're together, but on the eShop. Just as, at least I hope they do it on the eShop, because a port of a port. A port of a remake slash port, I really don't feel like should be full price. I mean, knowing Nintendo, they probably will be, but I think they would be better served being like £20 games on the eShop. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. Anyways, I'll be right back. Yeah. The only thing that's the issue with Skyward Sword HP, uh, HP, HD is that the Joy-Cons aren't as accurate as the Wii Motion Plus. And so I don't know how they would, if it would translate over very well. And I don't think they can rem remove the motion controls because the game was designed around it. So... It's not something that's just easily get, getting rid You can't just easily get rid of it. So, just kind of get caught up, but what were you referring to? Sorry about that. Uh, Skyward Sword HD, like, I don't think you can just simply remove the motion controls. So that's like, yeah. I mean, that's what they'd have to figure out. Like, she's just run over there, but it's like, I can see James just hanging around on the other side of this wall. <laughs> see, what I'm more interested in is how they're going to beef up the online service for 2019. <laughs> they won't, I don't think. I think they will. <laughs> That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo's playing it safe, but like modders have shown like the Switch can do a lot more than people think. Like you can actually easily modify the home menu to be whatever you want without any effort. So they could actually make themes like instead of just instead of just like um like color swaps. They can actually modify the layout and stuff. Yeah, I, I think paid themes and maybe themes with through my Nintendo because that has to give us something will be like actual things that do come out. I don't know why they haven't been a thing yet because it seems like such an easy addition, but yeah, that will be something that will eventually happen. It kind of reminds me. I still need to renew my subscription to the online service. <laughs> oh, really? So. Yeah, because I, funnily enough, I got my first month 
because I had leftover money and leftover my Nintendo coins. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, so. we got a family pass, which I know you're aware of, but the issue we've sort of faced with it is that because I'm the, the, the patriarch of this family account, and I'm in Europe, any sort of bonuses we get with the Nintendo Online service are all European. Ah, uh, So, okay. like, when they gave us the Splatoon t-shirts, only really me, Nerbion, and Voyager could use it because we had European versions of Splatoon 2. No one, and, mm. and one of my friends who's also in this thing. No one else could use the family to use <laughs> these codes they were given. Which oh, jeez. Kind of it does. That, I'm hoping that's just an issue with um, uh, Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 is one of those weird games that is kind of region locked. Okay. Because um, it has all the different sp Europe like regional specific Splatfests. Yeah, I'll be honest, I'm just kind of glad at least Nintendo's allowing region games on your Switch now. Mm. Region free you know, is nice, yeah. It is nice. It should, it should be an industry standard. It should be an industry standard, yeah. Just like crossplay, right, Sony? <laughs> Wink. They're starting, I think, with one of them. I don't know, I think Fortnite. Rarely. Yeah. It's... Oh boy. Yeah, it's been interesting with Sony as of late, because they seem to be transitioning into the PlayStation 5. Yeah. I, th I wonder if that's going to be Sony's big announcement. Well, no, they're not at E3, are they? So. <laughs> nope. No. They're, they're pulling Nintendo, except an extreme version of Nintendo. <laughs> like, I feel like, unless, unless they do their own conference just before or just around E3 where they announce the PS5. Because I remember when the PS4 and Xbox One got announced, both Sony and Microsoft did like their own special conferences, but then they also did E3. Yeah, yeah, they did that. I, no, I think Microsoft did E3 as their first announcement, and then Sony did their conference. So. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure both of them did, like, a week before E3, their own special kind of announcement. Oh, that, they could have been. They could have yeah. done that. Oh, yeah, I still remember that time. The whole TV Sports, TV Sports conference and then the whole DRM thing. Yeah, I, and Microsoft it, changed that and fast. So, yeah, Sony took the piss out of them and so Sony definitely Inten entered this generation of the strongest. They they did, but I think if I'm gonna make like two soon predictions, I think Sony's arrogance bite them in the ass. Well that's like, what that's what happened with the PS3. Exactly. And it seems like they're not really... It's like like they learn in the beginning, and they kind of right, right back to their arrogant mode at the end. Mm. I just think that Nintendo might have the edge of this generation, although maybe Microsoft might... I know, I was I was a little confident to say Microsoft until I saw the, the X018 conference in Mexico. Oh god. And then I was like, alright, I've lost all confidence in Microsoft again. <laughs> Well, yeah, and plus two, apparently, the rumor is their Scarlet Machine, which is the next generation console they're making, mm -hmm. might not even have a disk drive. I thought the rumor was that they're just releasing a version of the Xbox that doesn't have a disk yeah, drive. Yeah, they're, right, they're releasing a like, disk version yeah, but not of the like, Xbox One. Yeah, like an Xbox, yeah, a disk version of the Xbox One. I can't see a disk version of a system working, because that's kind of what they tried with the Xbox One. Like, you had to always be online. So yeah. they were trying to push people having debt on digital stuff instead of physical. Yeah, exactly. But I think especially right now, the the gaming industry is still in that in between where it's like, where it's like you know I I get they're trying to push all digital, but not a lot of people have up to speed internet. No, they don't. I mean that's the issue. I mean it's like Nintendo with the smartphones. Not everybody has a smartphone, and so having online lots of online integration put into smartphone is like not good. I mean, some people just don't want smartphones. I just think it's kind of stupid because it's like, the Switch can handle native voice chat. Yeah, I know it can. There's a lot of things. The Switch can handle the very light version of VR. But there's no... Oh, whoops. There's no VR-based uh, anything on the Switch. <laughs> right. Exactly. The only thing there is is like a hidden application. Yeah. That's it. That's what I mean. Like, it, I, I feel like Nintendo might release like a very light version of VR in the future, like where you just put the you know, there was that patent where you put like the screen, the Switch into like a little headset, and then yeah, you could have yeah, VR I did a little. Mode. 
yeah, I did a little discussion with Colin here a couple weeks back, which is still coming. Probably have a little bit more on added on to it, so stay tuned for that. But um, I basically said that they might be preparing the new Nintendo Switch model coming out for VR, maybe. Maybe it'll be a little stronger. I just maybe it will come out alongside VR. I I think this new Switch model is not going to be like highlighted as really new, but it will have like slightly better capabilities, kind of like how the PSP had four iterations of itself, but they weren't really yeah. highlighted at all. And a lot of people, and I, I find this funny because a lot of people are saying, "Oh, the new Switch RAM," and I'm just like, "You realize that the PSP had more RAM and future revisions." Like, yeah, because the PSP originally had, I think, 32 megabytes of RAM. And then the future ones had 64 megabytes. And it was crucial for homebrew developers because they could actually take advantage of it and put full code into that RAM with ROMs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, now the thing with the Switch is, you know, they, that is also a possibility. They yeah. could have more RAM, I like, think. As long as the games all work on both the classic Switch and the new Switch, oh, I think it's be fine. Like, I think it's going to be more sort of like the Xbox One S, where it's a little bit overclocked, not much, but I think a little bit, and then you'll have um, more RAM and maybe more storage, internal storage, maybe like better screens and stuff, but like just subtle improvements. You know, not like anything like the new 3DS or, uh, um, you know, the DSi. Like, I'm not thinking that level. Yeah, but... well, the PS... well, I mean, the PS4 Pro, you can play anything on anything, but I feel that's something I'm wondering. Like, when they do the PS5, will it be like this sort of... Because a lot of people were speculating that the PS4 Pro comes out and then the PS5 will come out, but games will still work on the PS4 Pro. They just won't work on the PS4 anymore. I just think that the PS5 is going to have to be backwards compatible because you have this huge user base with this huge ass library and they're going to have to transfer that to the PS5. If Sony doesn't do that, I think that's going to be a very unwise decision. But people don't like playing older games. <laughs> Didn't you hear the Sony man who said it? <laughs> I mean... Sony's gonna have to suck it up and deal with it. Like it's not it's not PS1 or PS2 levels. Like I can understand maybe the position on that and how even the PS3, because that thing's hard to emulate. But the PS4, like, is probably gonna share the same architecture with the PS5. And they're gonna have to get some of those games working on the PS5. Mm. You know? I, I they're they're gonna they're gonna have to. Like that's gonna that's just gonna be a stupid move if they don't have backwards compatibility, in my opinion. I, I don't think the PS5 will be a Switch-esque thing, just because Sony's kind of put their hand up in the air around the portable market. Like, I think they're going to focus... I think so, so, Sony's just going to focus, like, very specifically on power over anything else. And yeah, and I, hope that everyone's okay with that. <laughs> and I'll be honest, a certain man... Uh, there's a little hint, but a certain man made a medal originally conjured up that rumor. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. And, you know, it's kind of unreliable. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Okay. <laughs> but, uh... I'm not sure which man you're talking about, but I will. <laughs> I, 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 said, I said a man made of metal. <laughs> doesn't... <laughs> for me, it doesn't affect. But if the chat gets it, that's good for them. Good, good on that. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, um... it's... Been... Yeah, it's it's basically kind of up in the air at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just I don't know where Sony's gonna go with this, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. They they have some strong momentum, and I'm pretty sure if they play their cards right and if they force compatibility with PS4, um, though I think they'll do fine. This guy don't sneak up on me, but he walked over to me. Now, what's interesting is what Microsoft is going to do. I mean. A lot of people are thinking they could be just like this media box that plays digital only games or streaming games and I mean there are the rumors that Scarlet is going to be a family of systems but like uh, I don't know. If it's, <laughs> if it's anything it'll be like a multimedia system or something like that. But like that's what yeah, Microsoft have kind of stepped away and they're trying to make it so that 
all you need in your house is an Xbox, and that's it. And then you'll be able to get Sky. It works as a Sky box. It will work as a net something to watch Netflix. It works as a smart TV, basically. Yeah, it'll be like the Nvidia Shield, almost. I'm thinking, where it's like, like I don't think it's gonna be Android powered, obviously, but like. It's going to be way more powerful than that, but I think what they're going to do is offer, like, you have this huge game console with actual disk drives in it, and it's going to be, like, $599, 600 bucks. And then you have this little itty-bitty little set-top box where it's going to have lower processing power, but it's going to use the cloud to help aid in that processing power. Kind of like this supplemental computing device that was patented by Nintendo. Okay. I'm still wondering so if something from that will come out. Like, like if we'll get sub. I mean, I'm assuming this. Presumably, the supplementing computing device is the, the switch dock, is an assumption. Is my assumption. But I Maybe. Don't, I don't know if it really does what it sort. Of, it doesn't. Certainly doesn't look like it did in the pattern. But I suppose that's never the case, is it? Um. I'm just waiting. I'm gonna be honest. I'm waiting for uh, the, the the fan made add on accessories that homebrew developers are gonna try to. Because there's actually history, historical presence behind it. Uh, interesting facts, the original Xbox had a custom model made by this company that you could overclock it and it had its own <laughs> custom CPU. Where the fuck did this Onyx come from? What the fuck? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Wait what? If you look at the stream, I was just, it just took like two steps and the bloody Onyx appeared and like on top of me. <laughs> oh jeez. What the hell? Getting the... Uh... Let's use. And... Okay, go away on that. <laughs> That's funny. But, yeah, no, I was just saying that maybe they'll... Maybe something similar will happen to the Switch, but people would just, like, pile upon add-ons and add-ons for the Switch. Perhaps. I just... So, when's the Sega 32X for the Switch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah! Hey, good job. So what games are you playing right now, Martin? Well, uh, currently I'm actually going through Mario Odyssey to finish up the moons, uh, collectible moons. Okay. So I'm currently in the Sand Kingdom right now, finishing that up. Okay. So... Are you, aim are you aiming for 999 or just the 800 and whatever it is that make up the collected moons? Probably 999 because I'm crazy, but <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Nah. As uh, as they say, you gotta collect them all, right? Um, I, I, I do not think getting 999 moons is worth it in that game. <laughs> at all. Yeah. It's almost like the Korok Seeds in Breath of the Wild. It's just like, you know, yeah. you gotta know when to stop. <laughs> That's exactly like the Korok Seeds in Breath of the Wild, God. But, but I really want to play Breath of the Wild here in a, here more recently, so... That's yeah. one game I'm aiming to do. You've played it before, have you? Breath of the Wild. I own the game. Yeah, yeah. I own the game. I'm halfway through it still. It's been probably a half a year since I played it, so... Okay. I think, um, do you know Arlo, the YouTuber, the puppet guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I watch him a lot. He's been doing like a sort of in-depth um, Breath of the Wild series. And I'm actually really liking that. Um, split split each of the episodes up by sort of themes. And uh, I didn't realize how much he really loved Breath of the Wild. Like I know pe I know people have been waiting for him to give his review, and he, he just hadn't been for ages. But uh, I've been really enjoying what he's been doing. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to check him out. Yeah. I, I, I really like those sort of in-depth reviews that go over stuff. Matthew Matosis was another really good, like, in-depth reviewer. That has just kind of slowed down a bit. I mean, he's been taking his time, but he kind of stopped doing stuff for a while. This Bioshock Infinite critique is a really good video. Nice. I remember I watched a video from Scott the Waz about Smash Wii U and 3DS, and he went through everything in depth. And mm. uh, This was like a proper history video. Yeah, I hit... A historical video, but also a uh, um, his personal take on it, which mm -hmm. eh, 
it's pretty cool, but we got shouted out once, so that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, Scott likes it. Scott wants to be on um, a stream or a discussion at some point, he said. So, I, I wouldn't mind talking to Scott. I, I quite like his content. Uh, he's, we've got really good uh, cinematography and really good humor as well. Yeah. So, oh, my Mew, Mew is stuck on the other side of this wall. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you, you have to find him under the truck, man. You have to find him <laughs> under the truck. <laughs> right. Are you replaying Donkey Kong Country, are you, Leo? Like, but I think... Nice. What a, what was I doing yesterday? I was playing, um, I had a friend come over and we started playing some co-op SNES games. And I finally played Ghoul Patrol for the first time. I can understand why, oh, well, wait, look at that, Bag of Stardust. I understand why people, um, didn't like that game as much as, um, the original... The original, uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. It was such a good game. Yeah, I know there's a ROM hack out there where it just makes this creator made just more zombie eight your neighbors levels. <laughs> oh, really? Right. Oh, that's yep. sick. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing some. There's a uh, pretty good, pretty good review count for it. So. Okay. I really like yeah. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. It was like one of those sort of SNES games that I really have fond memories of. I'll, to, I'll to, uh, send you a link to it. The the, the ROM hack. So it's pretty, pretty nifty. Yeah. And, and yes, Matthew Rondello, I know about the the new Scott the Wall subreddit. Oh. <laughs> oh, is it like the John Tron one? Oh yeah. <laughs> John's just not done anything in forever, so I don't even know what he does outside of his YouTube stuff. So. Yeah. He probably got rid of his copy of ukulele for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so bad. What happened with ukulele? I know. I've been I've been hearing like a lot of people mixed upon it. And... I don't mind ukulele as a game, but they really didn't help themselves with a lot of like pre-promoting, pre-promotion for the game, and like how long the Switch version took to come out when the Wii U version was meant to be one of the like main ones. Like when they announced I the know. game, they said it was coming to Steam and Wii U, and those are the two that they were making. And then the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version was being handled by another studio. And then they cancel the Wii U version, and they don't announce the Switch version. And then they announce the Switch version slightly later, but it's coming like three quarters of a year later. And then the game comes, right before the game comes out, they announce that they've removed JonTron and pissed off a lot of people. And then the game actually does come out, and it's filled with loads of bugs and stuff. And it's just like, this did not, this didn't go well at all for you guys, which is a shame. Yeah. I did wait and played it on the Switch, ukulele, and I like, I actually don't think it's as bad as everyone gives it like shit for. Oh yeah, I don't think it's bad. I just think the image surrounding it is what makes people think it's like, oh my god, bad. Yeah, like. It's it's an okay game. It's definitely got design flaws. That casino level is pretty bad, and the space level is slightly too big. But by the time by the time you get fly, everything just kind of becomes. But hey, it's at least accurate to '90s level design. I mean, that's even that. I mean, it's more like Banjo Tui level design, whereas Banjo Kazooie level design is a lot more compact. But yeah. uh, there are things about ukulele that I like over A Hat in Time. Like, for yeah. me, ukulele starts off strong and gets a bit weaker towards the end. But A Hat in Time... Well, in fact, no, A Hat in Time was the complete... It was the exact same, actually, sorry. It's, a Hat in Time starts off really strong with its first two levels. And then its last, like, three levels are so boring. Hey, at least with ukulele, they didn't outright deny a switch. And then make switch version. Oh yeah, that was really dumb as well. Like, yeah, you don't just go. I mean, no, you just you don't just go. Oh, it's impossible to make a Switch version, and then announce a Switch version. Like you don't tell people, even if at the time you do think it's not going to happen, don't tell people it's impossible because it does happen. It's like yeah, just like PR one hundred and one. Watch it just be this like buggy as hell build. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still need to play the Hat in Time DLC uh, that came out. 
mm. back in September. Well, yeah, I really, I really want the game on Switch. I just hope it comes out physically. It probably will. A lot of games seem to be coming out physically. Like you can only got physical. I'm sure they'll do a limited run, hat in time physical game. Yeah, one game I've been meaning to pick up for a while is Undertale on the Switch because it actually has a physical release. Yeah, my friend has it physically. I've been debating because I want to do. I always said uh, the only time I'd replay Undertale is if they released it on Switch, and they did. So. I am debating whether or not it's something I when to pick it up. Because it came Funnily out when I was way too busy. But if I can find a physical version, like Cave Story, I just waited. And then I found a really cheap physical version of it. That I picked okay. Up. I'm wondering if I can do the same with Undertale at some point. Well, the funny part with Undertale is that people have been using the fact that it runs on Game Maker to their advantage mm -hmm. by porting other Game Maker ma games into it. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Pe oh, this is funny. People actually got AM2R working on the Switch. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't know that was made in Game Maker. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was surprised by it, but it was kind of neat knowing that. Mm. Uh, I'm super happy that Game Maker games come to the Switch because there's so many good ones. Uh, can RPG Maker games run on the Switch? Um, I've been hearing that maybe that's been ported, but I don't for call we can get games like to the moon and its sequel which i still need to play yeah one one thing i find hilarious is that rivals of came out and said I, we want to make this game for the switch but it's in game maker so we're going to port the game out of game maker <laughs> and then after that game maker was announced and they're like uh we'll weigh our options yeah <laughs> i think they'd already started i'm assuming they'd already started pouring it out and they're like oh yeah. shit do we continue or do we cut our losses and is, Hello, is Rivals Bobby. made in Game Maker 2 or Game Maker 1.4? I think it's in Game Maker 2. Okay. Because Game Maker Possibly. 2 is the one that's on Switch. Yeah, so I think that helps it a little bit. But... Mm. Yeah, the thing with Rivals is that uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder what language is going to be written in when it's ported from Game Maker. Probably C or something. Possibly. But won't know for sure. I wonder if they're going to keep Ori for the Switch version. I think they are. Like, I mean, it would be really um, poor for a fighting game. The, the reason fighting games don't have exclusive content anymore is if you start giving one an exclusive fighter, then that one just becomes the default one to play. And if you, and, and then if you make it so that each system has its own exclusive fighter, so let's say Ori for Xbox, Mario for Nintendo, then those characters are banned from competitive use because unless you play a specific version or have a specific version at a tournament, you can't do it. And what if you, what if you have someone who's exclusive, who plays Mario, someone who plays Ori, and they end up fighting each other? Like one of them can't use their main. Yeah, that's that's pretty unfortunate. I mean, I was personally hoping that maybe they would have like a Nintendo guest in the Switch version, but I uh, doubt it. That, that's the thing. That's why when people were also like, those rumors came out that said Link was going to be in Soul Calibur 6 on the Switch, it just didn't make it seem very likely to me because they're not go Soul Calibur aren't going to use a character who can't be on every system anymore. Exactly. So any, it means that we won't get any. Fire Emblem or Zelda character or anything like that on Soul Calibur. Uh, that's why we get stuff like 2B and um, Geralt, even though their games aren't on Switch, they're not owned by Sony, Nintendo, or Xbox, so... Yeah, that makes sense, but anyways, I'm actually going to get going because dinner is ready and I'm starving like heck, so if you are still around, I'll probably rejoin you, but if you're not, well, uh, uh, like you, I would like to thank you for letting me on your stream. <laughs> no um, worries, thanks for keeping me entertained and keeping me like not from being lonely, basically. Hey, might as well. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, I'll see you, chat. Right. Say bye so, to Mark, chat. All right, sayonara. Sayonara. Yeah, I've been playing for an hour and a half, so maybe I will stop once I've entered the next level down. I don't think there are too many people watching the stream, but I just wanted to do something because I've 
not been doing anything um, tonight. Everyone I know is really busy tonight, and it sucks. It's just me and the Pokemon. Though I've been debating starting a new series. I don't know if I should watch a new TV series or like a new anime or something. But I just can't think of one that would be good to watch if anyone has any recommendations. Ideally, I think a comedy would work well for me. I quite like my comedies. So let me know if there's anything that you guys are watching that you recommend. And I'll give it, I can give it a look-see. Intentionally, with create a character, you could create Martha or Chrome in Soul Calibur. That's the one that I, I quite want to get Soul Calibur 6, and that's just for the character creator. Just to make a bunch of nonsense characters and then fight. Do that exclusive custom character story mode with Sans Undertale. I think it's definitely something worth playing, getting Soul Calibur 4. So I heard about another um, horror game that came out. Um, I don't think recently, but there's been at least two and a third one being made. Another animatronic horror game that I'm pretty sure is riding off of uh, the hype of Five Nights at Freddy's. It's called um, Slaughter Me Street. One, two, three, Slaughter Me Street. So if you're into sort of animatronic horror, <laughs> it's actually got its own sort of weird ass YouTube series to try and help promote the game which is quite interesting like they don't they didn't pick up as much because i don't think the game is as good no offense to the creator i've not actually played it and i don't plan on playing it because i don't like them sort of jump scare type games so i will not be getting fnaf for the switch unless my fiance forces me to get it but then she can play it and i will uh, do something else <laughs> I went out for a jog today, I tried to use the Pokeball Plus accessory and I got like halfway through my jog and I thought I'd check to see how many Pokemon I picked up and it turns out it wasn't, connect it wasn't properly connected to my bloody phone and I just can't get it to connect, it comes up saying an error every time apparently Push was having the same problem uh, but I don't know what the solution is, you go to the Pokemon go to the Pokemon's like FAQ page, the troubleshoot page and be like my Pokemon Go app accessory isn't connecting to my phone, what do I do? And it just simply says, uh, we're sorting the issue out, we don't have anything to share right now. It's like, oh great. <laughs> Thanks Niantic. Oh no, Geodude avoided the attack. Hello Nintrav. <laughs> you know, they got better with their bugs and stuff, but I don't know. I kind of wanted more from the like the Pokemon Go accessory, like to actually be able to use it and not have to pay attention to my phone when I'm running. Oh no! Oh phew! Come on, Nidoran, you can do it. I believe. Yeah! There we go. Yeah, Pokemon Go definitely got better. It's not nearly as glitchy as it used to be. But there's still clearly issues. <laughs> Let's swap out. Right, Nidoran, I'm taking you. I'll remove you from party. Add. Bell Sprout back into the party. There we go.
Oh, it will, ne it will never get to that point, Leo, where I'm having all Pokemon from all regions. I'm pretty sure that um, this time, it's got Gen 4 now. Not all of Gen 4, but it has a bunch of Gen 4. By this time next year, it will have the rest of Gen 4 and Gen 5. And then by the time we get Let's Go, Maril and Togepi, we'll have Gen 6 and maybe the beginning of Gen 7. And then by the time we get Gen 9, we'll have Gen the rest of Gen 7 and Gen 8. And then it's just going to keep going like that. Like, we'll finally get all the Pokemon in by the time we get Pokemon Let's Go routes and Let's Go... Uh, I don't know what... what uh, let's Go Skitty? <laughs> like, by the time we get them, it's when, uh, is when we'll get um, every Pokemon in. And then Gen 9 will come out. And we'll... Uh, or Gen 10 will come out. And then we'll... Uh, they'll be back, back, back behind again. I've been, I've been taking my time uh, playing through games. I, I didn't even intend to be playing Pokemon Let's Go. I was I, I had told myself I was going to be trying to beat Okami before I picked up Pokemon. And then I'd be playing through Pokemon until Smash came out. But that clearly didn't happen. Also, I just bought... Because um, the Black Friday some of the Black Friday sales have started early. And I got myself a copy of South Park, The Fractured Butthole on Switch for like £17, which is a pretty decent price. I've never actually played any of the South Park RPGs, and I know I'm starting with the second game, but I think it'll be fun. Like, is Stick of Truth out? Oh, whoops. Is Stick of Truth out on the Switch yet? Because it got announced, but I don't remember if it got a release date. I know it was going to be digital only, though. Leo, I think the way they're going to start doing Pokemon now is we'll get Gen 8 next year, then we'll get Pokemon Hard Diamond and Rough Pearl, uh, and then we'll get um, Pokemon Let's Go Maril and Let's Go Togepi, and then they'll take a break, and then we'll get like Gen 9 or whatever. And they'll just start doing it like that. Or we'll get... No, sorry, we won't get Gen 9. We'll get um, Pokemon Ultra Plus and Ultra Minus. Or <laughs> a third version of Gen 8. I will, I, well, maybe we'll even get that before Let's Go Maril and Let's Go Togepi. But they're kind of... They're, they've set themselves up now with the Let's Go formula. To have um, a, a new excuse to remake games. So this is clearly a remake of Yellow split into two versions. They'll have a remake of uh, Crystal split into two versions and then Emerald. And then they'll remake Platinum and then they'll remake Black and White too. And just so on like this but doing it as, a, as the Let's Go style. Because that's still clearly popular. I mean, it's selling, so... I will be really curious to see when the f proper sales figures for this game comes out. How well it actually did. Because I know there are a lot of outcriers out there and people saying they weren't going to buy it, but I really do think this game will have appealed to, like, the wider audience. Alright, Team Rocket Run. You're not the female. Are you the female one? No, you're not the female one, are you? I don't think. I mean, this game's weird because it's not really a. This game isn't like a remake of Yellow, but it outright, like, contradicts Pokemon Red and Blue. Because you meet Blue in this game, like, after you beat Brock. 
and he talks about how you've got a Pokedex and how he never got one. It's like, well, yes, he did, he did get one. So what, in this game just like, it's like an alter, another alternate universe where this time Red and Blue didn't get the Pokedex before? Like what? Why Why do this? This could have just been nestled like in between gold and silver but before red and blue. I also wonder if the Pokemon special manga will cover Pokemon Let's Go or if they'll treat it like a, a spin-off game or sort of spin-off or something. Because it'd be really neat if they covered it because it's like the next generation of Pokemon. Like at least for them, like the next heroes. I'm just going to chain Geodudes. <laughs> Part of the Mega Time... Oh, God. <laughs> Doesn't the Mega Timeline only have X and Y and Oras? Yeah, Pokemon's a ridiculous multiverse. You have, like, Pokemon Red and Blue, and then Gold and Silver, which are actually part of their own individual universe and then ruby and sapphire in fire red and leaf green are in a separate universe and that's also where hot like it's like ruby and sapphire fire red and leaf green diamond and pearl heart gold and soul silver black and white and then x and y is like its own universe <laughs> which is also where orat and maybe where this game is and then sun and moon is in I think the Mega Universe. Or Sun and Moon is either in the Mega Universe or the original universe. And then Ultra Sun and Moon is in the Fire Red and Leaf Green universe. It's like, why? <laughs> why? I mean, I, obviously they're not thinking of the overall plot in the same way that, like, they're retroactively forcing the plot in like Zelda did. But it still doesn't make much sense. I mean, it, in the Mega Timeline, we technically haven't seen Red, Blue, and Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal. Because you have to remember, in the original Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Gold, Silver, Crystal, Pokemon are genetic, genetically modified regular animals that were done by scientists on Cinnabar Island and escaped. Like, that's the original plot behind it, which is why there was only originally, like, a certain 200 and all within a certain area, and how Professor Oak's you know, talks about how they're not quite sure how many there are and stuff like this, but they're pretty sure this is all of them. It also explains why you get regular fish and regular birds and stuff in the real world. Like, or in the Pokemon world. But then as soon as Ruby and Sapphire started, they just kind of threw that all out in the window and now Pokemon were all natural creatures that always existed. And then just followed on from that. And, and Fire Red and Leaf Green decided to go with that version of the canon instead. So, <laughs> if we want to do like a fucking, yeah, just not an MCU type thing, like a, just a Marvel thing and have the tons and tons of multiverses. Uh, Alright, so I have a question for the chat. Yeah, something you guys can decide. Do I take Kabuto or do I take Omanyte? Which one do I go for? You have this battle to decide. Oh, what? Oh, poo. Yeah, red and blue are in Sun and Moon, that's what I mean. So, if red and blue are in Sun and Moon, but Sun and Moon technically doesn't take place in any of the regular... the timelines we've seen, red and blue, at least it doesn't take place in the Mega Revolution timeline, then... presumably... Oh, no, no. Sorry, does Sun and Moon... Oh, fuck. Does Ultra Sun and Moon takes place in the 
Ruby and Sapphire timeline because it's got all of the villains. And that's the, that's the only timeline where literally every game has taken place, other than X and Y, but Lysander's there anyway. But, uh... Like... Could, I mean, we, um, we can, uh, I guess we can assume the events of Red and Blue happened, but... I mean, no, actually, no, sorry, this game will be in the Mega Evolution timeline. So actually, in all three timelines, Red, Blue, and Yellow... Or a version of red and blue exist so um yeah <laughs> this is just this game you know unnecessarily complicated Sun and Moon is Mega Evolutions, and yeah, Sun and Moon is in the Mega Evolution timeline. I don't think, does Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon have Mega Evolutions? Because if not, then it's in the non-Mega Evolution timeline. Because they're in, they're, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon are in different timelines. Shit, shit. Nope, not that one. What do you mean Rainbow Rocket is pulling from universes where the protagonist was never born? I haven't actually played Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but that's just confu that's confusing as fuck. You can't you can't introduce a universe just where no protagonist existed before. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's like a super specific universe. I mean, maybe that's how the Pokemon manga explains it, considering the Ruby and Sapphire leaders in that series are, like, dead, but... Yay, I beat the super nerd. Okay. Okay, so we got we got more votes for Kabuto, so I'm gonna go with Kabuto. Don't worry, um, Poochie McDog. I have um, an Omanyte on my Pokemon Go, so I can always tr send that over. So I've got him. So I have both. I always like Kabuto. I like Kabutops. Well, let's catch this Geodude. It's huge! Alright. Don't need your condescending attitude, thank you. Oh, go away. So here's a question, because someone else asked me this. Um, for Amiibo, in Smash Brothers Amiibo, you have the Pokemon Trainer. Do you think the Pokemon Trainer will be like individual Amiibo? So the Charizard one already is out there, but the Squirtle and Ivysaur, and then even the Trainer himself will all get their own Amiibo. Or do you think they'll get one really big Amiibo, kind of like the Detective Pikachu got a really big Amiibo, and that will have the Trainer plus Charizard, Squirtle and Ivysaur all on that? Which one do you guys think is more likely to happen? The more expensive big amiibo or the individual character amiibos? Man, if it's like that Leo God game freak of just gone complete nonsense with the timeline. 
I mean, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry, it is. I thought like this Nintendo were confused on the Metroid Zelda and actually the Fire Emblem. Well, no, the Fire Emblem timeline is getting to the point of being stupid. We'll have to see what three houses does to the Fire Emblem timeline. Whoa, what the fuck? I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, we, we, we're complaining about the Pokemon timeline. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's a complicated mess. <laughs> yeah, because it's... Uh, so there, there, are, there are three playable timelines, which is the original red, blue, and yellow, gold, silver, crystal timeline. Then mm -hmm. Ruby, Sapphire, Fire, Red, and Leaf, Green, Diamond, Pearl... Um, <laughs> Oh wow, it's a fable. Um, sorry, uh... Like, uh, Root Diamond Pearl... Uh, God, I, I, fuck, I, I forgot, I haven't even considered the existence of, um... Like, Platinum and... Like, Emerald and stuff. Presumably they're all in the same timeline. Uh... Oh, shoot. Interesting. Isn't yeah. it from that tweet that developer made? Or something like that? What? Which tweet? No! You didn't see the new Digino Gaming video on Pokemon? No, I haven't yet. There was a developer who tweeted in Japanese talking about the timeline, and then a tweet was deleted, and then nothing ever again. Yeah, I mean, the way I had understood the timeline is you've got the Mega Evolution timeline, which starts with Oras, and then goes on to... We're assuming Pokemon Let's Go, and uh, then X and Y... And then Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like that's the that's the assumption. And then you've got the regular, the mainstream timeline, which starts with Ruby and Sapphire and Fire Red and Leaf Green happening at the same time. And then that goes on to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Diamond and Pearl. Um, then uh, Black and White and Black and White Two following after that, and then Sun and Moon at the end. Or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, sorry, at the end. And then you have the original timeline, which is just red, blue, and gold and silver. But now that I think so, about it, I guess yellow could follow from crystal. It could go yellow crystal. And potentially also platinum and emerald are, are part of that timeline as well. And then uh, what um, Leo just uh, told me was that in... Uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, all of the team leaders who are in that that world and all the enemies, all actually come or all actually pull from their own universes where the protagonists were never born and they won. So, the each, so there's a timeline, either one timeline or multiple timelines, where just the main characters never existed. <laughs> so oh each of the villains somehow won, and I'm assuming it must be multiple timelines because if the Ruby and Sapphire villains won then the world should be destroyed. <laughs> so none of the other villains can fucking exist. By the way, switching kind of gears, did they ever figure out where Breath of the Wild is in the Zelda timeline? Yeah, Breath of the Wild is... Okay, so the official word from developers is that Breath of the Wild, they're never going to reveal it properly because they want people to speculate on it. Like part of Breath of the whole point of Breath of the Wild is discovering things yourself and they want people to have their own interpretations. Right. But, from other words from the developers and the the in-game contradictions, Breath of the Wild is actually, like, a fourth timeline. Oh but, my god. But no, 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 so it's, it's different. So, the Breath of the Wild timeline is on an x-axis, <laughs> is on an x-axis, and all the other games are, like, legends within the Breath of the Wild universe. So think of it like Breath of the Wild is the real world and Ocarina of Time is their equivalent of the Hercules story. Ah, uh, okay. So That makes sense. Yeah. So the, so I, the idea of it being that each of the games we've heard of like are actually legends, you know. These are actually yes. like legends within the Breath of the Wild universe. And it's so, what their universe uses to sort of have its culture and shit. So basically I'm interpreting it like this this timeline is so far in the future 
that these old games can be considered like tales. Yeah, like has it been sort sort of officially stated in this upcoming Breath of the Wild Champions uh, book that's going to be coming out? Um, okay. Well, in the original Japanese, the two frames are Anuma saying that he doesn't want to reveal the official place because he wants people to speculate on it and the other one being that all the events of the previous game happened so far in the past that no one's actually sure if they're real or if it's all fiction okay that's an interesting way of going about it yeah i guess so that so so what it's saying is is all the stuff you see like people talking about the ruto princess and all stuff like this like, people have, in this Breath of the Wild timeline have heard of the events of Ocarina of Time. And there was a princess called Ruto. But the actual, like, events of that game, people interpret it differently. Some people think that Ruto defeated, like, helped Link defeat Ganondorf and Link went back in time. Some people say that Link actually died and that Ruto helped seal it with the other sages. Some people... Um, well actually I guess those are the only two ways that that could, story could go but like the point is that both exist in that timeline because people aren't actually sure what happened so people just say different things and that's where okay. the timeline comes from that's why some people say that the events of Twilight Princess happened after Ganondorf was executed whereas other people say well actually um, Ganondorf became the demon pig Ganon and then lived on to do all of this shit hmm <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. uh, that's something. I mean, I really <laughs> like it. Not only does it reflect the real world, where loads of cultures have myths that they consider to be history, even though it's like not most likely. Right. Like it also just um, it, it Nintendo gave themselves an opening. Oh, oops, I didn't. I didn't want to have magic card for this. Nintendo have basically given themselves up an opening where they can now make any Zelda game in any um in any timeline they want it doesn't even have to be connected to any kind of timeline because it can always be written off as now being well you know this is just a story okay like this is is just this is this is actually a legend right a cheap way to get rid of the inconsistencies essentially yeah I mean, I still think I still want them to do stories that actively do follow on from other games. But like, the way they've done it now is that if they come up with a story and they can't think, "Well, how the hell would, can I fit this to every other Zelda game?" They don't have to anymore. They can just be like, "Well, we'll just make up this story, and if people ask where in the timeline it is, we'll just say, "Well, actually, it's not in this timeline. It's just its own separate thing." Yeah. Hmm. That's uh, that's something. At least less complicated than the Pokemon. Yeah, the Pokemon is stupidly complicated. Surprisingly, an easy one, um, which I do want to do a video on, so I'm not going to go into super detail, but I'll talk about, is the Fire Emblem timeline. Hmm. Like it, it's been getting more complicated ever since Fates, but initially the Fire Emblem timeline is, you have the Ike's games are the first ones in the story like the Tellius games and then following on from that you've got um well uh, after Radiant Dawn it then goes Genealogy of the Holy War and halfway through Genealogy you have Thracia 776 so it's like an interlude game then after that you've got Marth's original game like the very first game Echoes follows directly two years off a year after that and Secret Secret of the Emblem follows a year after that. So they're all like connected. And then after that you have Crom's game, Awakening, which follows on after a hundred or so two hundred years after Shadow of the Emblem. And hmm. then after that you've got Roy um Lin Lynn and Ellawood's game, which is uh, Blazing Sword and Binding Blade as a direct follow up to that. And then Sacred Stones is such a guiding game that doesn't connect to anything else that no one actually knows where in the timeline it takes place. But um, consider, I don't know, I like to assume that it takes place alongside the other Game Boy Advance games, so more towards the end of the timeline. 
and um, Fate, and this, this is why Fate makes things complicated, uh, or, or Awakening started. So Awakening has the Dragon's Gate, which has existed before, but in this game it's used to, for like time travel and other multiverse shenanigans. So Awakening mm -hmm. creates like, there's a timeline of the future where uh, Krom gets killed and Grima takes over. And then Lucina travels back in time to the main timeline. And then there's another version of the timeline, which is where Morgan's from, where the main characters from Awakening go to that timeline and save the future and defeat Gr Grima there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, and then, so that's the timeline that, Morg that Morgan's from. So there are like, and this, this timeline, Lucina stays in the future and becomes like the queen. So there's three different versions of Awakening. And then Fates is in a completely other universe. Wait, what? So, so this is the thing. Fates is in another universe <laughs> that's separate from all of the other games. But it's entirely possible that f the Fates universe is time runs backwards. Okay. Yeah, so, so the reason this happens is because... Um, and the reason people think this is because there's a character... There are three characters who are children in Awakening. They're part of the children from Lucina's future who all appear in Fates. And you find out through their side story that the god from Fates' world brought them over. So that but they get brought over before the events of Fates take place. <laughs> but during the events of Fates, we see the beginning of Awakening happen through a side story oh. which obviously doesn't make sense because if characters coming from like years after Krom's world are arriving in this universe like at least a year before Fates happens then how can <laughs> we be seeing the beginning of Awakening so the easy solution <laughs> is that he didn't just bring them across dimensions he also brought them back in time for some reason but the more interesting idea is that the Fates timeline is parallel to the main timeline, but time goes in reverse. Okay, that's uh, that's that's something. Yeah, so um, it would be like if you're at the beginning of the Fates timeline and you jump dimensions, you'd end up at the very end of the main timeline. And if you're at if you so if you're at Ike's game and you jumped over to the Fates timeline, you'd be at the very end of that timeline. It's uh <laughs> Jeez, that's Well, I mean at least it's not as bad as the Castlevania timeline. I, I love the Castlevania timeline. I love the Castlevania oh, I love the Castlevania timeline for the simple fact that Bram Stroker's Dracula is canon. <laughs> and that's like the exactly. best thing that's the best thing ever. And then like Igarashi took off his like non like <laughs> the other games. It was like, it was pre, yeah, it, like, I mean, Bram Stoker's Dracula being canon is pre Igarashi. What just makes it really funny for me is that, uh, have you ever actually read Bram Stoker's Dracula at all? I haven't, actually. So, like, Dracula basically gets def killed in England by a bunch of, like, by, like, a, a real estate agent, his fiance, uh, a, and a bunch of, like, really angry young men. <laughs> and if we assume okay. this is the same Dracula from the Castlevania games who throws fireballs at people, can transform into a giant monster, and everything else like that, <laughs> just kind of gets beaten to death in the city streets of London, like the fucking <laughs> London streets. Oh my god. <laughs> I just find the idea really, really funny. <laughs> it, it kind of is, but maybe he didn't have that many powers back then. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, the Dracula timeline is like way after. Like the Dracula timeline is like after Simon Belmont, and I think it might. It's either just before or just after Richter Belmont and Symphony of the Night. Oh, okay. I looked under the truck, red. That's that's how. <laughs> No, wait, I thought you looked under the mountain. <laughs> oh, but no, no yeah. the Castlevania timeline's a fun one. But that one's fairly straightforward. You've got Leon Belmont, 
then a bunch of Belmonts nobody cares about. No, sorry, you got Leon Belmont, then Trevor Belmont, then a bunch of Belmonts nobody cares about, then Simon, then I think another one that no one cares about, then Richter, then you've got Bram Stroker's, you've got Bloodlines and then Bram Stroker's Dracula, and then you have Julius Belmont, I think it is. You have a bunch of other mm. games nobody cares about. And then you've got, um, then Dracula gets sealed off forever. And then you have um, Aria of Sorrow and the, the final games that are all set in the modern day. Yeah, and then wasn't there some other Castlevania games in like a parallel universe? Yeah, so they rebooted the universe with um, Lords of Shadow. And Lords of Shadow oh, yeah. is basically its own timeline. But that one's really straightforward. It's just Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate, and then Lords of Shadow 2. Are those pretty good games? or? Uh, they're average games. Like, Lord, I've never played Lord of Shadows 2. I hear that one's not too great. But Lord of Shadows 1 was fine, and I really like what it did with its explanation for Dracula and the Belmonts and why they're so connected. Like, I actually really like what they did in that game. Then Mirrors of, okay. Mirrors of Fates. People don't like because of what they did with the characters, but I think it makes a ton of sense. Like, I think they were very clever with how they changed up the formula, the formula, um, the relationships of the characters everyone knows. But also kept the more like, um, kept the more consistent to how they're known. Like they still managed to make Trevor be the first person who killed Dracula, just like he is in the main timeline. But the way they did it, with all the changes made, it works. Is what I'm trying to say without spoiling anything. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. But pe people give it Although... a lot. Of, people give it a lot of shit because of what they did. But I think it's fun. Mm. Although, probably me, I'm not going to play those games first. I'm going to play uh, Super Fa Castlevania 4 first, I think. Okay. I played through I, I played through Castlevania 1, 2, 3, 4, and Dracula X. I need to... When I've got time, I will pick up that. And if it comes for Switch, I'll pick it up straight away. But if it doesn't come for Switch by the time I've got more free time, I'll pick it up on PS4. The, the Simply okay. the Night um, Rondo of Blood games yeah i was thinking probably picking super castlevania 4 up on the wii u virtual console okay yeah super castlevania 4 is fun i, I like i like super castlevania 4 i think it was um dracula x i quite liked i actually think the music's better in dracula x than in rondo of blood people give um, okay. mirror of fates it, it's been so long that i can't remember if it's that uninteresting and boring to be honest problem with Mirror of Fates is because it has three main characters, uh, four main characters in fact, it just jumps between them all like constant. Like it doesn't, no, no, sorry, that's a lie. It doesn't jump between them all constantly, but it's like you get all the way to Dracula with one, and then you have to get all the way to Dracula with the next, and then you have to do it with the next guy, and then you have to do it with the next guy. And it just gets a bit ridiculous. Hmm, okay. I mean, you, you're traveling through different parts of the... Um, you're traveling through different parts of the castle. But it's still a bit like, okay, suddenly I've swapped characters entirely. Okay, Evie, I hope you're happy that I wasted my money for you. <laughs> what have you got for me, Mew? You as well, Mew? Okay. Well, what's, well, this guy looks fancy. <laughs> yeah, I'll get the Bulbasaur. Do I have to beat Misty first? Because I knew that's what you had to do in Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, go on, teach me. Bounce. <laughs> Which move should I learn, guys? Bouncy Bubble, Buzzy Buzz, or Sizzly Slide? Sizzly go. Slide seems pretty cool. Alright, Martin says Sizzly Slide. What do you guys in the chat say? I'll go for the most voted one. Yeah, in, Cast in terms of Castlevania, people give Castlevania 2 a, um, a lot of shit. But, like... I think it's fine. Like, if you know what you're doing, Castlevania 2 is incredibly easy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you know 
if you if you just have like a little note telling you what all the bullshit is is for, okay. then you mm -hmm. will like get it. So okay, people are saying buzzy buzz because it'll help with Cerulean City. So let's do it. Yeah, sure. I'll replace an old move with buzzy buzz. That's an electric move. I get it. It did sound like an electric move. Um, what should I get rid of, though? I'll get rid of Quick Attack. It's too late! Learn it now! <laughs> Ooh. Rip. Uh, you, rip. Need, you need to have caught 50 Pokemon. It doesn't have to be unique species. Okay, I've definitely caught more than 50 Pokemon. Pretty sure I've caught more than 50 Pokemon. We'll have to see. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah, Castlevania 2 I think is fine. Um, Castlevania 3 is bloody hard. It's way too hard for what it is. <laughs> so I think Super Castlevania 4 is a good one to start with. Isn't like uh, that a reimagining of like the first game? Yeah, it is. Although it doesn't really... I mean, it is a reimagining of the first game, but it's not like a remake, because it doesn't really follow anything from the first game other than the fact that you're Simon Belmont against Dracula. Hmm. All right then. So have I caught a lot? Caught seventy-one. Okay, I'll take care of Bulbasaur. Yeah. And I won't be turning him into candy, you cruel monster. <coughs> and go for days without eating. Jeez. That's a new bit of lore. <laughs> Can I take your Oddish as well? Um, the problem is I've got Eevee who doesn't evolve and I've got Mew who doesn't evolve, but I don't want to remove either from my party. So, um, uh, nope, sorry. Maybe I'll remove Bellsprout and put Bulbasaur in. What level's Bulbasaur? Level 12, okay. Add to party. Over Bulbasaur. No, over Paris. Okay, cool. Um, right. Now that I'm here in Cerulean City, I think it's time to. Do it? No. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take my poke, save the game, take my Pokemon out of the Pokeball Plus, and just out of curiosity, and see how many levels it went up. Do, do. I think I found a real contender to the uh, the Pokeball controller. Oh yeah. And yep, that is the slime controller for the PS4. What? Slime controller. Look in the staff chat. Oh, what the fuck is that? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so ugly. <laughs> oh, oh god. Looks like um, a game spear. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post that. Yeah, I'll bring this Pokemon back. I'm gonna uh, just upload that to the stream <laughs> so that everyone can see how gross this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh Save man. image. Everything's a bit slow because I'm streaming. Uh, right, I'll put that up on a sec. What is my Nidoran? Yeah, Nidoran grew to level 15. No. 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 Is this the same Nidoran I had? Wait, doesn't Nidoran... Yep, there we go. Nidoran evolves. What perfect timing. Nice. Yeah. So 
horn contains venom. If it stabs an enemy with the horn, the impact makes the poison leak out. Lovely. That does not sound vulgar at all. You got rewards for my stroll. Yeah. And I'm gonna take a. Alright. I'm gonna take a. Maybe the Bulbasaur out to. for a stroll. This music make, makes me think of Kingdom Hearts. So, Secret Sauce and our Discord server says, I can't wait to see how Taurus Gaming reacts to Smash Direct. <laughs> well, it's going to be an exciting one, I think. Um, I don't know what <laughs> characters they're going to show off, but I'm definitely interested to see if Goku from Yu Yuki makes it in. <laughs> yeah, I'm really like the most likely child character. Yeah, same here. I think he seems likely, but I also think that maybe the Mario head from Super Mario 64 might make it in too. <laughs> that is a pretty iconic version of Mario. And I mean, we already that, have that... Dr. Mario, so I don't see why we can't have both. Like, why can't, I mean, maybe Dr. Kawashima can be an Echo Fighter of him. Maybe, that would actually work pretty well, or the vice versa. Yeah, maybe, or uh... vice versa. Maybe also Andros, you know, if we want two Echo Fighters. Well, Andros does actually have a body, like, if yeah, you get a mind. You, you never see it, you never see it. You always see just him in his hands. That's true. Are we going for SNES graphics or N64? <laughs> I think we have to go for N64. We've got to keep it classic. All right, we got we to gotta make the iconic look. Mm. But yeah, no, that, that tweet's been formally deleted, so... <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. YouTube messing up because it was, was a stream that we did in the past. Uh, I'm yeah. going to post this ugly looking slime up on to the stream and then I think that will be the end of the stream so let's uh here you go let's play with slime controller <laughs> looks like the next Smash Bros controller huh it's beautiful isn't it it's uh <laughs> it is beautiful man Ten just God lord, why? why and if you like use that? an adapter, <laughs> if you have an adapter, you can use it on the Switch, technically. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. We've made it through Mount Moon. We're in Cerulean City. It's uh, getting late over here, and I've got some stuff I need to do. So, oh, it's a slime PS2 <laughs> controller. You lied to me, Martin. Wait. PS2. That's the. Oh, no, no, it's not a PS2 controller. It's a PS4 controller because. Oh, yeah. sorry. There is a. Oh, sorry. There is a slime PS2 controller. My bad. I I can't read. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. So thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for joining me. So. Uh, and joining. Thank you as well, Martin, for keeping me company. No problemo. Uh, it's been a fun stream. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Maybe I'll do some more with Pokemon another time. I don't know where I'll be up to, because I'll probably be playing a bit of this off-stream as well, because I'll still need to record a bit more. Um, maybe if I get my PS2 stuff sorted out, we can play Gex at some point. That will be fun. Yeah, you can buy the PS2 slime controller, just for that. <laughs> can buy the PS2 <laughs> slime controller and play some uh, lovely uh, Dragon Quest that I don't own on PS2. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Uh, I might, exactly. do, might do a WiiWare stream at some point, just because I bought a whole bunch of um, WiiWare games before the Wii Shop went down, and mm. I haven't played a lot of them, so... <laughs> Alright, well, maybe I'll do that. That sounds pretty fun. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining me, and uh, have a good rest of your weekend. Peace!